for a cause that I believe is the most important cause I've ever been involved in in my life, is the opportunity to work with Ted Olson. Uh, people used to call us the odd couple. Uh, they used to wonder what we were doing working together. Well, we've worked together. We've become close friends. And I think the message that we've tried to send is that this is not an issue of Republican or Democrat. It's not an issue of conservative or liberal. It's, a cons it's an issue of human rights, of civil rights, of constitutional rights. It's an issue of are we going to fulfill, finally, the promises of our Constitution and our Declaration of Independence, that all people are equal, that all people have the inalienable right to pursue happiness in their own way. And I know that, that Ted has some words he wants to share with you, and I know that you really want to hear from our plaintiffs, who are four of the most wonderful people in the world. Um, uh, the first two witnesses we put on the stand were Jeff and Paul. And the next two were Chris and Sandy. And I asked Jeff and Paul, why do you want to get married? And their answers elated you, inspired you, and broke your heart. And there wasn't a single person in that courtroom who didn't have tears in their eyes listening to that testimony. And Ted has said in his arguments, and he makes the greatest arguments in the world, but he has said that in a sense, the best argument we could make is just to let people listen to Chris and Sandy and Jeff and Paul explain why they love each other and why they want to get married. God bless you all, and God bless the United States Supreme Court. I know that you want to hear from the plaintiffs, and we cannot say enough about them. What David just said was very true when he put Jeff and Paul on the witness stand and Chris and Sandy testified. That won the case because they told who they were, what it was like to be victims of discrimination, what it was like for their family, how they felt about marriage, what it would mean to them to be able to be married, what it would mean to them to be treated as equals in the state that they lived in. And the other 12 days of the trial were important, but they meant nothing compared to that testimony. The second best thing was when David Boys, who was the finest trial lawyer in the United States, There's nobody on the planet that disagrees with that. <laughs> Especially the witnesses that were brought into court. Well, I should say that the, the other side, the proponents of Proposition 8, listed eight witnesses that they were going to bring into court to testify about the issues that were involved in the case. David Boys and members of our legal team went out and took their depositions. And six of those witnesses decided that they had something else to do rather than come to the trial. Of the remaining two, one of them testified about things that had nothing really basically to do with the case. And the other one, David Boys gave a tutorial to everybody watching on what cross-examination was about to have to put your hand up and swear to tell the truth and just answer simple, polite questions from David Boys. <laughs> and at the end of his testimony, as David said, or Chad said, some one of them said, that witness, who was the number one expert on the other side, testified that this country 
would be more American and more true to its ideals when gay and lesbian citizens were allowed to get married. That was the case that we tried for 12 days, and the judge in San Francisco decided in 138 pages of findings of fact and conclusions, which will be mandatory reading in every law school, plus David's cross-examination, of course. That is the case that the Supreme Court of the United States restored today that struck down Proposition 8 and eliminated that terrible thing that your, citizens, your fellow citizens had done in November of 2008. Now, this is really something to have the United States Supreme Court in two decisions vindicate your right to be treated equally with all of the other citizens of this country. This is the Supreme Court of the United States vindicating your right to decency, re respect, and equality. Now, the, re the cameras are pointed at us, but the cameras should really be pointed at you. Because all of you, all of you helped this happen, and you'll hear from the plaintiffs, and you've heard from Chad and Lance and Adam. This was a family, everything. Everyone worked together. You have no idea how many people were involved in making this happen today. So many people, so hard work, such hard work, so such selflessness. Thank you. Thank you. There was never a word of disagreement. There was never that much space between any one of us. We were working for the result that you see today. But it wasn't just this team, it was all of you out there and all of the people that all across this country that allowed the American citizens, judges and everyone else to see what we're seeing here. Happy people. Happy people. With their families, their children, their dogs, and happy people. I know I saw some dogs out there. But what, what the American people have seen is a shift in its population from something that was 8 to 10 to 15 percent against the right of marriage equality when this case started in May of 2009, and it's now 8 to 10 to 12 to 13 percent the other direction. No issue of, of significance of controversy in this country has ever changed that fast, and it's because of you and because of the cameras that could see you out there. So thank you.